dear students and uh, this lecture we will be going to see the GATT provisions on agriculture. So, as we were discussing and we have now an idea about who are the agriculture producers and who are the agriculture exporters in the world. Now, we have to see that what are the provisions which come up in 1947 uh, in the in the GATT and we have to remember that these provisions come up on the background of the great depression in the 1930s followed by lot of legislations I would say that protectionist legislations uh, in the US and other countries including other countries and the second world war the result was second world war and then our 1945 onwards uh, the formation of various institutions and these GATT rules are specifically formed on the background this particular background of severe food shortage and even famine in some of the countries like India and the, the, the world famous famine which is affected during the second world war in Kolkata is also to be specially mentioned. So, we will uh, see in this class specifically the GATT provisions with regard to agriculture. So, if we look into this GATT, so you can see that always there was a tussle between the United States and uh, the United Kingdom for you know tariff preferences at the same time these non-tariff barriers. Because you can see that agriculture exports and import controls as well as subsidies play a crucial role in the agriculture market. Because these developed countries mostly subsidize their agriculture sector. So, the agriculture market the production may be high and their demand depends upon circumstances and the prices mostly depend upon the tariffs or tariff preferences. So, and even some of the countries put import quotas for certain products in order to maintain the domestic uh, prices of uh, agricultural goods. Foreign exchange restrictions that is another important criteria as a non-tariff barrier. Quantitative restrictions, so article 11 of GATT specifically prohibits quantitative restrictions, but in agriculture sector QRs allowed by many countries because of the, the special uh, requirements of that particular countries. So, in the agriculture sector the quantitative restrictions were very very common. So, the imports are not allowed in certain areas. So, the governments to take decisions with regard to the uh, import of uh, these particular commodities. And the non formation of ITO. So, last class we saw that the, uh, the, the ITO was dead. So, in the post war period the countries thought that ITO was going to be a, a ITO was going to be the answer to, to control the world trade, but it was not happened and the Indian discussions came to the WTO as as as, as GATT not uh, you know to the, the GATT instead of ITO. So, the protectionist policies of the industrialized countries was one of the most important reasons for distortions in the world food markets. Why it is known as distortions? Because artificial markets are created because of subsidies and these products the developing countries were not able to compete with these prices, these artificially made prices and which depressed the world prices and the world markets of agricultural commodities. So, in short developing countries products were highly not competitive or uncompetitive with regard to the developed country products because of this artificial creation of markets. So, the basic principles the questions uh, you know asked in the GATT also came to the GATT for discussions was can we 
impose the basic principles to the agriculture as well, because the GATT includes the principle of non-discrimination, reciprocity, transparency, removal of quantitative restrictions and tariff cuts. But most of the members considered agriculture as a separate agreement, because you cannot blanketly apply these rules MF enclosed or national treatment principles or other uh, uh, non tariff you know specifically with regard to non tariff measures. So, they considered agriculture as a separate agreement and also considered that in certain cases these exemptions to be applicable to agriculture agreement, because if the develop developing countries wants to survive yes then you have to uh, uh, put some kind of uh, you know restrictive measures in imports. So, in within the GATT agriculture was considered separately and it got a special treatment, because we already said that QRs quantitative restrictions are banned or I would say that restricted in all other agreements, but agriculture agreements and in commodities it took a, a liberal treatment. And also restrictions in domestic productions are removed or domestic price stabilization and price support policies are continued. For example, the MSP the minimum support price scheme in India is very popular in certain products that which includes the price support policies of the government. So, so what does it mean? It means that even though QRs are banned in other agreements in the in the agriculture within the agriculture agreement it is permitted as a part of the governmental policies. And then most importantly the agriculture export subsidies, export subsidies to agriculture was permitted. So, but you know subject to certain conditions like market shares, equitable market shares. So, what is equitable? It is very difficult to define with related to agriculture export markets and agriculture export subsidies. That is why the export subsidies are proliferated to many countries. So, later on during the negotiations it was the removal of export subsidies was considered as one of the pillar of agriculture agreement along with removal of non tariff barriers. So, most of the members used export subsidies also in the agriculture sector. So, we are talking about how the agriculture got a special treatment in GATT and also there are special treatments to protect the agriculture sector. For example, Im variable import levies domestic subsidies. So, and also we can see that uh, uh, so variable levies as well as uh, quotas are also imposed in the agriculture imports. And uh, it means that the agriculture sector even though other non tariff barriers were completely banned in other sectors, but agriculture it is allowed by the GATT within the GATT negotiations. If you look into the negotiations especially the Dungal draft which formed the GATT in 1947. So, the developed countries were in favor of reducing these non tariff barriers including subsidies. And also the negotiating history is very tough, because there is a large number of developing countries and the, the surplus producers in US and European Union and there is large quantity of importers. So, the agriculture uh, uh, negotiations were very tough 
for the uh, participants to negotiate the, the, the reconciling provisions within the GATT. So, subsidy was always a point of discussion and what do you exactly? We will see the definition of subsidy, <coughs> especially the agriculture subsidy later on. But these subsidies include income support, price support and operational support, export support and also the import support and even transporting support. So, it means from the GATT period itself, there was no prohibition of subsidies on agriculture products from the very beginning. So, subsidies for export is permitted. So, the negotiations were going on and then we can see that certain provisions will come up, certain provisions come up. So, the some of the provisions which we can see is 16.1. So, prohibition of export subsidies other than primary products which is added later on and then so 16 article 16 is one of the important provision. Then it is added extended and, and finally, you know uh, some pious languages like export subsidies may be harmful because the agriculture negotiations are very tough because nobody want to touch upon the agriculture sector of every its own countries because uh, it is a very sensitive issue at the domestic level. So, 16.3, 16.4, so other than non-primary products and then special treatment. So, you can see 16.1, 16.2, 16.4, and 16.3 and 16.4 uh, uh, definitely. So, many provisions were included, but it all these provisions which says you know. Uh, so, certain restrictions or control which was put it for the agriculture products. So, the free rate was stopped with this particular provision and other provisions which you can specifically we can see that the GATT in general, the GATT has you know completely banned quantitative restrictions under article 11, but in agriculture it is banned with certain conditions. So, the article 12 which provides an exception for article 11 in, in case of balance of payment problems. For example, uh, this was the Indian QR case argument of the government of India before the dispute settlement body that India is facing uh, uh, balance of payment problems. So, we should get an exemption under article 12, but unfortunately, fortunately the, the panel and the appellate body say they rejected the Indian condition and said that India was facing balance of payment problem in 1991 and the WTO came into existence in 1995. So, you cannot claim this particular privileges after 1995 by showing an old balance of payment problems. And most importantly article 13. So, import and export quotas are abolished. So, you can see only two situations one the quotas abolished and then second is this quotas can be only imposed during balance of payment problems or balance of payment situations otherwise these are uh, uh, is completely banned under the GATT provisions. And article 11.2 says that export restrictions can be used to prevent or relieve critical shortages of foodstuffs or other products essential to the exporting countries. So, it means that whenever there is a food security problem, the exporting countries can put restrictions, import restrictions as well as export restrictions. So, this is subject to the standard regulations and classification. So, the, the government, so we were talking about the government has put a specific ban on the export of rice under the article uh, 11 2, otherwise the government of India cannot put such a condition. And what are the other exceptions other than 11 1? So, here we can see that import restrictions. So, 
restrict the production or marketing of the uh, like domestic product of a domestic product that is close substitutes. So, I think these imports can be taken care by the anti dumping agreement. So, removal of temporary surpluses and then restrict the quantities produced of any animal product that is directly depend wholly or mainly on the imported product. So, it gives these provisions give certain exemptions, certain exceptions to the uh, you know strict implementation of article 11. So, we said that all the developed countries always say that the world agricultural market is distorted. How it is distorted? Distorted by quotas, distorted by subsidies and distorted by non market access. There is no non uh, there is no market access for agricultural goods. So, and that is why I said our perception during the 1980s, this was our main contention. 90s during the Uruguay round of negotiations, this was the main contention of developing countries that US and EU are the highest providers of subsidy. And the last class, last figure we saw that it is not the US and EU are the largest providers now. So, in a period of 20, 25 years, it become the developing countries are the largest providers of subsidies from US and EU. So, this was our old argument and we have to make the new arguments. And what is this kind of distortions? This distortions which was discussed in the various round of negotiations were the subsidies. So, there was subsidy war going on between, it is not going on between developed and developing nations, it was between developed nations. And agriculture protectionism and imposing additional taxes was the usual story. And if, if you see the, the uh, fight between UK, Canada and US, it is very evident. The high level of protectionism which prevailed in the agriculture markets and exceptions are very rare. So, in, in you, can, you can see that how complex the agriculture issue was during the 80s and 90s. So, it is reported that 60 percent of the trade disputes submitted to the GATT dispute settlement system was on agriculture between 1980 and 1990. So, it shows the, the, the controversial problems and the acute problems which was faced by the members at that point of time. So, there is lot of dispute between members on the agriculture sector at that point of time. The Uruguay round of negotiations which started from 1986, they talked about improving the market access and reducing import barriers and also there must be a discipline in, in discipline in subsidies, not the blanket ban, the discipline in subsidies and then minimizing the adverse effect of standards, sanitary and phytosanitary measures and technical barriers to trade on agriculture products. They discussed these three important points in the Uruguay round of negotiations and finally, the agriculture agreement was signed in 1995 with new provisions and disciplines and the core principles. So, in the next class, we will discuss about the agriculture uh, agreement, WTO agreement on agriculture, its provisions and which was what is actually concluded in the, uh, the, the Uruguay round of negotiations. So, the, in the background, we saw the present the world agriculture scenario. At the same time, we saw the GATT provisions and how it is negotiated and how it is concluded and what are the limited provisions during the uh, GATT negotiations. And in the next class, we will discuss about these uh, WTO provisions or WTO agreement on agriculture. Thank you.